the next character I think I would talk about would be Mr. Driller from uh, Namco. Now, uh, there was a DS game, Mr. Driller Drill Express, that came back out like in 2004 or 5. Um, the series has history. I don't know so much how much history I think it has with Nintendo. I think there was a has enough history to go back to Game Boy Advance, I think. Um, it would be a new, pretty much a new move set in terms of like using a drill to help fight the battle. And it would be, since Namco is working technically on the game, they're going to probably get probably maybe one or two of their characters in it. I don't think they're going to go overboard and put a million, but I think they might possibly try to put one or two. However, Mr. Driller is not one of the ones I think they would put in. And I said the possibility of seeing Mr. Driller would be very unlikely, even though he's a, the series is semi-popular and people actually quite like it. I would say it's not one of the big, like, big name Namco ones that they're going to want to put in there. So, uh, eight, he says, uh, a cis trophy? Sure. A trophy? Sure. A stage? I don't know. You know anything but size of character? I can see. Not so much a character. I see very unlikely impossibility status. And from Pokemon Generation 5, uh, black and white, and I don't know if he's going to be in black 2 or white 2, he might be. Um, basically, Pokemon Black 2, and black and white, I think black 2 and white 2, I'm not fully really sure. It'd be a villain rep for specific Generation 5, and instead of like a villain Pokemon, kind of like what Mewtwo was, it'd be like a villain human representation for Pokemon. And it could be totally different, I would say... Um, from the trainer because the trainer ten tends to have like a starter Pokemon. He, like, uh, you know, like, N could have technically any Pokemon from Generation 5 that at least he would tend to have like any Pokemon he has technically in the game or even the legendary Pokemon, you know. Um, basically, he could have a different set of Pokemon from the Pokemon trainer, which basically would be like the starters. He would technically have any other Pokemon. And I think it's a fifth gen rep that kind of is uh, like fits. It kind of fits into the game because he kind of like the, he's the villain of Generation Five. He controls Team Plasma. He's basically one of the leaders of Team Plasma. He's one of the final battles you face. Even you kind of face him here and there in the game. Anyways, he's kind of like the rival of the game. Um, I would say the possibility of seeing him would be average. I don't know necessarily what Pokemon he would have. But all I can say is it would be different than the, a Pokemon trainer, which is basically starters. He'd have anything else from Generation 5 that at least he would have, like, in the game. So basically, I think his Pokemon, and pick that, or maybe the Legendaries or something. Reshiram and all that. Uh, Neku from uh, Square Enix, I would say he could get in because the, world's end with you. the world ends with you on the DS, which is actually quite a popular game. People like it. They want a sequel. Um, his game involves fighting, so he would fit into, like, a Smash Bros. universe. Um, it's, like I said, it's liked and popular, and it would be a recent Square character than them going back and trying to be, like, let, like, pick a character from one of their older franchises, trying to pick a character from one of their newer franchises that is, like, Nintendo exclusive, except for the fact that they're not playing one, like, on the phones and all that stuff. But, you know, besides that, it's basically Nintendo exclusive. And also, they, the character showed up in, uh... The, the World's End of a Few characters showed up in um, Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance, so they're, they're wanting to probably use the characters more and more. So the possibility of seeing them is a, like seeing a character like that in the game is possible, but I would say that for sure it'd be more un unlikely because I think if Square Enix wants to pick a character to put in for a third party rep, they would pick a more important character, I'd say more likely from either uh, Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, or Kingdom Hearts. I'd say one of those franchises Square would pick a character from. It would not pretty much be from World, from World End with you. But it's there's a chance, but I'd say unlikely. It's not very unlikely, but it's, it's just unlikely. It's a chance, but not, not too much. Another Namco character I want to talk about here will be Nightmare from the Soul Calibur series. There were Soul Calibur legends on the, the Wii. He's important to the Soul Calibur series. He's basically one of the major villains to it. Um, and he fits into fighting games, like I said about Neku, basically he fits into fighting games because he's from a fighting game series. Um, however, I'd say the possibility is unlikely because, like I said, if Namco gets a character in there, they're going to probably put one or two characters in there, and they're going to probably want to pick some of their biggest characters, and I don't think a Soul Calibur character would technically be one of their best ones. I'd say probably in the top five franchises they have <coughs> that they could pull a character from. I think Soul Calibur would be there, but I don't think it's in the top two or three. I'd say top five, like number four or five. I'd say 
possibly the possibility is unlikely kind of going on the verge of average because I think if they did want to put a slow caliber character in there I think he would be the choice uh, another Namco character would be Pac-Man now there was a he was in a ton of Wii and DS Pac-Man games from Pac-Man Party to the Namco Museum Remix and the Namco Re uh, Museum Mega Mix there was also the Namco Museum DS game and while those are games that are mainly Namco as a whole obviously Pac-Man is in them because he's like their mascot he's like their biggest guy and uh, he has history with Nintendo. There's been a ton of, uh, of uh, Pac-Man games on the system since like NES. Um, and a recent one would be the 3DS game Pac-Man and Galaga Dimensions. So I think basically since he's like one of the, he's one of Namco's biggest characters, I think he's one of the characters that has the highest chance of getting in there. I'm gonna say possibility good, almost on the verge of very good, but he's not that likely. But I'd say he's on the verge of it, with just being good because he's like their main mascot. So if they want to put one character in there. He's one of the characters I think they would be thinking about wanting to put in there. Palatina from Kid Icarus would be the next one I talk about. Now, Kid Icarus returned with Kid Icarus Uprising on the 3DS. The series is quite popular and it's important to Nintendo because it was one of their first couple franchises they brought back out on the NES and went to the Game Boy. He was, a pit was brought back as a retro character. Now he's technically in there just as a Kid Icarus only character because the series was brought back. Um, and with the series brought back, and especially with Sakurai working on that franchise when he brought it, he brought it back, I think the chances of us seeing a second Kid Icarus character are very likely. Who that character is, I have no idea, but I see another one. When it comes to Palatina, though, she has a history with the series. She's basically been in since day one. She's been around for years, and people know her. She actually kind of has like some importance, not just to the series, but in terms to Nintendo. She's a big female rep, especially for Kid Icarus, and she have a new moveset because she's kind of like the goddess, like a mage goddess character. I'd say the possibility of seeing Palatina would be good. Not great, but good. Not very good, but you know, just normally good. <coughs> Peppy will be the next character I talk about uh, from Star Fox. Um, the chances of seeing him, I'd say, He'd be, he could possibly get in because Star Fox 64 3D was brought back, you know, Star Fox 64 3D on the 3DS, Star Fox 64 was brought back, and he basically has been in the series since the beginning. Uh, he is a popular choice, people, especially for his dual barrel roll, you know, stuff, you know, and that could possibly be in the game as a part of his voice acting. Um, and possibly he could be different. He'd be different probably than Fox and um, Falco and especially Wolf. Um, and also, since the series went back to like 64, that was when he was a little more prominent and a little more important to the series. Like in the later games, he kind of left Star Fox and went off on his own, being like, uh, you know, the voice of them, like on the communicator and stuff like that, over the overhead kind of stuff. But back then, he was actually a pilot and was actually in the action. And they can kind of pull him back because they brought back that game. I would say though, his chances, like chances are, the possibility would be average. I think he'd make more sense maybe as an assist trophy. Or maybe like 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 this like the like the message with like Fox and everything you know stuff like that more so than a character. Prince Fluff for a new uh, Kirby representation because Kirby's Epic Yarn came back out in 2010 on the Wii. It was actually quite I would say not a lot of people not a lot of people liked it, but there were people that did like it. And it was a new step for the Kirby series. Um, basically, he a new Kirby rep. Instead of picking a character from like older games that have been around for a while, he was in one game and if he was put in the game, Prince Fluff would be the new Kirby rep. Uh, he, uh, he would be, he, a Yarn move set would offer something different to the series and he would be a better choice than Yarn Kirby because, like I said, double characters is kind of not really a good choice. Like, he would have technically the same moveset as Yarn Kirby, so why would you just do Prince Fluff? Because it would be a different character than having two Kirby's. <coughs> you know, I'd say his possibility is good. It's not great, it's good. If he wasn't a character, I could see him as a cis trophy. And with how big Kirby was on this generation in the Wii and DS, I could see a possibility of a fourth Kirby character. Although I think Sakurai would probably want to focus more on the Kid Icarus roster and keep his Kirby roster exactly the same. I don't know, but I'd say if there was, his possibility is pretty good for Prince Love. 
The next one will be Ray from Disaster Data Crisis. Now, Disaster Data, it's, it, it, he'd, be, he's one, he'd be one of the newer Nintendo reps, like a new IP from Nintendo. The, uh, tech, uh, technically, I think Nintendo published it. So I think it would be a new IP for them. I don't think it would be a third party character. He would be there because of Disaster Data Crisis, a recent game, and he could kind of fit in with the typical gun users in a sense because. There's a lot of characters on the roster that technically go based off of that. However, I'd say his possibility is very unlikely because he was in one game. It was not localized anywhere else besides Europe and Japan and I think Australia. It didn't ever made it to America. The game wasn't really that big to begin with, although a lot of people do like it. And the fact that he has normal guns was it's kind of like the reason what they did with Snake. They kind of censored him with making it not making him not use all his like machine guns and handguns and everything because they didn't want to put like realistic guns in the Smash Brothers. And that's kind of where his moveset kind of relies on. And Snake can get away with it because he kind of has CQC. He kind of has, like, he kind of got away with it because his explosives and everything. He had CQC. I think Ray, I never played the game, so I don't know. I, you guys let me know if he actually has normal fighting abilities. But without guns on his side, that kind of takes away from his moveset. So I'd say very unlikely on his part. A good assist trophy character, though. I'd say a good assist trophy and a good trophy. And maybe a Disaster Day Crisis stage. As a character, not likely. Rayman from uh, <coughs> Ubisoft be my next character I talk about. Now, Rayman has a lot of history with Nintendo, especially since the N64. Um, he would be a new fighting style. His series actually kind of involves fighting to begin with anyways. And there's a lot of recent games that he's been talking about that he could be in there from. The Raving Rabbids games on the Wii, Raving Rabbids 1, 2, the TV Party game, uh, and I think then the Raving Rabbids World thing, even though technically he wasn't there, but Raving Rabbids kind of represents the Rayman series. Um, Rayman Origins on the Wii, and now the Rayman Legends game that's going to be exclusive to Wii U. I would say the possibility of seeing Rayman would be very good. I think he has a chance of being one of the third-party characters. 100% guaranteed? No, but I'd say a good 90, 85% chance. Ridley from Metroid. Now we're going to get into some tough topic here now. Um, he makes sense... <coughs> Because of Metroid Prime 3, Metroid Other M, he's Samus' rival. He has been since day one, especially since he killed Samus' parents in the storyline, the plotline of the series. And you kind of, you could definitely see that in the Prime 3, and especially Other M, like the, the whole rivalry between them and how Samus has been affected because of all that. Like I said, he's been in the series since the beginning, and it's just like Bowser, he could be easy to resizable. The possibility of seeing him is good because of how important he plays to the series and how recent he is with both Wii games and basically, you know, any future game in, in general, I'd say very good and say very good because there could be the possibility that they want to keep him in the series as a boss and they don't want to resize him so there's a possibility of that but I'd say he's the character outside of Adam Malkovich that would make the most sense as the next Metroid character. Next one we're talking about would be Captain Serp from the Wario Land games. She was in Wario Land Shake It. She has a history with Wario in general through the Wario Land games. And she'd be a good female rep choice. If they didn't want to go with a WarioWare character, they want to go for another character. She would make the perfect second WarioWare representation since she's been in since the beginning. And she'd be a good female rep. Especially to counterbalance Wario, Wario and Captain Serp. Uh... She kind of, she, it's a pirate. She has a good move set for like all the stuff she does is like the pirate, you know, that kind of stuff. Possibility is good. I wouldn't say. I, I'd say she's on the same level as Mona. I'd say if there's another character from, you know, Wario Wear slash Wario Land, it'd be between Mona for Wario Wear or Captain Surf for Wario Land. It'd be a female representation more than likely. I'd say possibility good. <coughs> now here comes another Square Enix rep. I'm going to talk about. This.